What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the new year. Here I am with you sharing more gaming news in 2017. I think this year is going to be even better than last year. We got some great consoles coming out, great games coming out, and more incredible gaming news. Today's video is about Street Fighter V, a game that I don't play that much of anymore. I'm actually pretty good at Street Fighter, but as time has gone on, the people that I grew up playing fighting games with have all drifted away, moved to other states, and it's a lot harder to get all of us together to really delve deep into the fighting scene. But for, for all intents and purposes, I'm a pretty beastly Street Fighter V character, and Street Fighter in general, Mortal Kombat in general. For me, Street Fighter has always had this very interesting lineage. I remember Street Fighter II when it hit the arcades, it was amazing. Street Fighter II Turbo came out a little bit later on. Then we got Hyper Street Fighter II, which is much faster. And then ultimately we got Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which is just insane. This actually came to Super Nintendo and it included four new characters. Uh, the game was faster. It just had all types of new tweaks and additions that made it the ultimate version of Street Fighter 2. And some people wanted to see these types of changes happen with Street Fighter 5. People wanted new characters. They wanted to see additions to speed and more options in the gameplay. And apparently, it's not going to happen. I'll drop a link in the description. Don't expect Super Street Fighter V, says Capcom. For over two decades, it's been established fact that each game in the Street Fighter series will inevitably receive multiple iterations, with each updated edition adding new characters, stages, and gameplay tweaks. Many wondered if this would continue with Street Fighter V, but even before the game's launch, Capcom assured fans that instead of having to buy an entirely new Street Fighter V title, they will receive additions through DLC. Capcom's statements about how Street Fighter would be updated wasn't enough for some, as rumors recently popped up that a Super Street Fighter V was being developed. Before these reports were able to gain any traction, Capcom killed them outright by reiterating its previous statement that Street Fighter V would be the only version to be released. Capcom's Matt Delgren made it very clear to event hubs that there will never be a Super Street Fighter V. We're always looking at how we can innovate on the new series while keeping an eye on how receptive fans would be to a new type of offering for a Street Fighter game. Street Fighter V innovated on the series model by being a service-based platform with earnable post-launch content. Even now, the price point of the main retail offering has dropped, which is essentially the starter version of the game. However, even if we come up with new models, we are still committed to our promise that the initial release is still the only version you'll ever need to own with all game updates and balance adjustments available for free." End quote. Given the history of Street Fighter V, it is easy to understand why these rumors were manifest. However, Capcom's approach to Street Fighter V proves that the company has no reason to release a super version of the game. This year alone saw the introduction of new characters, modes, stages, alternate costumes, and more. All these add-ons were made available via DLC, not through a new game. Capcom could always change course with Street Fighter V, but for now it seems to be committed to keeping its promise. Don't hold your breath for Super Street Fighter V, people. So to me this is actually really good news, and I do like the new direction that Capcom's going here. Uh, in the past, they nickeled and dimed it. You know, I still have my original Street Fighter 2 on Super Nintendo. I have Super Street Fighter 2 on Super Nintendo, and I think I have Turbo. Uh, all on Super Nintendo. These are three games that only changed, you know, very little. Added some new characters, new speed. Uh, and, you know, it's a whole new purchase. And the people have to do that to get these new characters. Like, you know, now there's Akuma. There's all these new characters in Street Fighter V. Imagine if you could only get those characters by buying a new version of Street Fighter V. To me, that would be a little unfair to the people who were early adopters of the Street Fighter game and bought it before the game was even truly complete. So I like the way that they're doing it. They do understand that all this stuff can be added through DLC. There's really no need for a Super Street Fighter V because you're getting it through DLC. If you're a fan of the game and you want to try some of these new characters and try some of these new modes, you can get it through DLC rather than purchasing a full-fledged game all over again. So to me, it makes a lot of sense. No Super Street Fighter V. We're going to get it as it comes in new mode, stages, alternate costumes. I think it makes a lot of sense. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Are you a fan of Street Fighter V? It was 2016's fighting game of the year. It's a fun game. I'm actually pretty good at it. Not the world's best, but I am good at Street Fighter. And uh, it's just been a while for me to kind of get back into the fighting scene with all these new genres that have kind of emerged from the rubble in the last 10, 15 years. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video or you found it interesting. Join the Facebook group, follow me on Twitter, and you can support the channel at BeastlyGamer.com. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.
Kau